What's up guys, Justin here with the sketchupessentialist.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can create a drop down in your kind of dynamic components so that you can pick different preset values. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so a week or two ago, we talked about creating this dynamic cabinet. And basically what this cabinet is, is the dynamic cabinet that's going to automatically resize all of the different framing parts and pieces. I will link to that in the notes down below, but this one basically works by resizing every time you scale the object, right? So notice how this is redrawing all of these objects as soon as I rescale it like this. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna set this where you can, when you run this, you pick from a drop down inside of the components option right here, rather than using the scale tool to resize this. Now there is a value in having a cabinet that you can just resize with the scale tool. So one thing you might think about is just making a new copy of this component um, that is only a drop downs version. But basically what we wanna do is we wanna go into our component attributes. So we're gonna right click on this component and within our dynamic components, we wanna select component attributes. And remember up to this point, the size of our cabinet is set by just the, the size of the bounding box surrounding all of the geometry in this object, right? You can see how the size of everything is set based on how we scale this right here. But what we wanna do instead is we wanna set this length X, length Y, and length Z to a list of dimensions that you can select from a dropdown. And so to do that, what you can do is you can come in here and you can click on this little arrow function right here. And so you can see that there's an option in here for users being able to edit as a text box, for example. And so if you do that, what's gonna happen is they can type in a value. Well, in this case, we want to select from a list. And so in this case, right, we're picking the X value the value on this red direction right here. And so we wanna pick just kind of some of the more common cabinet widths. And we wanna set the display label to cabinet width right here. And so you can click in here, you can add an option. So we can call this 12 inches, the value is gonna be 12. This one is going to be 15. And you wanna make sure that you put the quotes over here in the list option, just so you can see that this is gonna be 15 inches. So now we do 18 and 18, and I keep forgetting to do that. There we go. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on apply. And I'm gonna go back and add some different values in here, but notice how I can click this drop down right here and I can pick different widths. Now, one thing you're gonna notice though, is you need to click on the option for apply right here in order to do this. So we can click on apply right here. Now the cool thing about this is you can also scale this a little bit. So you haven't lost that scale functionality in here. Just note that when you set a width, right, like this one, and then you override that by scaling it, you are changing the value of the length in here like this. But in this case, that's probably okay because we're really using kind of a functional or we're creating kind of a functional cabinet in here that we can place wherever we want. And so our length Y is going to be the length on the green axis. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pick a drop down. We're gonna pick select malit list and we're gonna call this cabinet depth. And you're gonna do the same thing. So 21 inches, 24 inches, like this. And then you might put just kind of a standard cabinet height in here. So we can just call this cabinet height. And we'll call this standard dash 34.5 inches. And we'll type in a value of 34.5 inches in our value. And we'll click on apply. So now you've got options in here to set your cabinet depth. So when I set the cabinet depth, that means the distance from this front to this back should be 24 inches. And we can go in here and we can check that just to verify, but you can see how that's two feet right here. So now you've got a cabinet that has standard widths in here like this. Okay, so now let's say that we want something where we have a single drop down and we wanna set multiple values. This is a little more complex, but once you understand it, it's actually pretty easy. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create what I would call the magic board. And so what the magic board is gonna be is it's gonna be a board where we can actually pick the dimensions 
of a board and um, make this those dimensions as well as a fixed length. So in this case, we'll just call it a uh, one and a half by three and a half rectangle for right now. And I'm just gonna push pull it a little bit so it's got a little bit of thickness because we're gonna use that scale or length function in order to set the length of the board. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a component and we're gonna call this magic board right here. And we'll click on create. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna jump into my component attributes. And we're gonna to want to have our component attributes as well as our component options open um, because we're going to be looking at both of these. And so what we need to do is we need to use the same function we did with the cabinet. So I'm gonna add an attribute and we're gonna add all three of the sizes, right? Remember length X is gonna be the length of the object on the X axis, length Y is going to be the length of the board, and then length Z or LENZ is going to be the thickness of the board right here. And so what we wanna do right now is we've gone through before and we've set this up where we can scale it. But now what I wanna do is I wanna set a drop down where I can pick the size of the board and we're gonna have the board actually resize to the dimensions of actual dimensional lumber. And so to do that, um, we gotta get a little bit funky with the way that we set this up. So the first thing we need is we need a drop down where people can pick the board, um, the board length. And what I wanna do, we need a drop down where people can pick the um, dimensions of the board. And I want this to be set up where you only pick one out of the drop down. You don't have to set the length, um, the thickness and the uh, height. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding an attribute where we pick this. And in this case, we're just gonna create a named value. So I'm just gonna click in here and I'm just going to call this dimension right here. And so what we've done is we've created what's known as a custom attribute. And so that custom attribute is something we can set and then we can use it to make things happen up above. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create our dropdown. So to do that, I'm just going to click right here and we wanna set this so that it is something that you can select from a list right here. And in this case, we want our units to be a decimal number. And I'll tell you why in a second. So. What we want this to be able to do is we want people to be able to pick board sizes. So in this case, I'm gonna add an option for a one by two right here. And so you'd think that we'd want to put a value over here for one of these dimensions. You'd actually be wrong only because you can't set two values based on this and you need to set the dimension of the board to be three quarters of an inch by one and a half inches, right? It's not actually one inch by two inch. So when we do this right now though, if I click on apply, notice how I get this drop down right here with no additional options. So we're gonna go back in here and we're gonna add a second option. So we'll just call this one by three. And we're gonna set this as a value of two. And I'll tell you why in a second. But now we've got this drop down right here, right? And you can see that depending on which one of these we pick, it's going to give us a value in here. And so what we need to do is we need to set our length X and our length Z so that they adjust based on which dimension we select, right? And so that's where this gets a little bit tricky because once you start adding like a two by two, um, you need to have both an X value and a Z value in here. But for now, what we wanna do is we want to go into our length X and we want to set this up with what's known as a choose function. And so when we do that, your length X is going to stay the same for the one by two and the one by three, right? They're both gonna be three quarters of an inch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a function in here. A function is just a mathematical function that you can use in order to do different things. And so in this case, notice how you can click on the drop down under functions and you can find choose and you can insert it. And so when you insert it, what that's gonna do is that's gonna ask us to do a couple different things. So in this case, we're going to tell it to choose based on this value that's set in dimension right here. So in this case, remember that we have two drop down values, right? So the first one is going to give us a dimension of one. The second one is going to give us a dimension of two. And we're gonna add more to the list in a second. But for now, what we wanna do is we want to set this to be equals 
choose and we want to set dimension in here right so we're saying okay based on the value of dimension if it's one the first value is going to be 0.75 all right if it's two the second value will also be 0.75 right here. So now if I pick either one of these, that X value is going to be 0.75. Not very interesting, right? However, this gets a little bit more interesting when you start adding the um, one by two and one by three length right here, because those are going to be different. So in this situation, this needs to be equals choose dimension, and then comma, the first value is going to be a one by two right? So this needs to have a value of an inch and a half. But the second one, which is going to be your one by three, right? That's the second one in the list. That needs to have a, a dimension of 2.5 right here, right? So now if you look at this, this is calculating the dimensions of this board based on what we select in here. And so what we need to do is we need to go back into our dimensional dropdown right here and we need to add more options. And so I'm gonna go through and add a bunch of these, but I'm gonna add an option that's gonna be one by four, it's gonna have a value of three, and they're just gonna be sequential, right? So one by six, it's gonna have a value of four, one by eight, it's gonna have a value of five. Notice how I'm just adding one, two, three, four, five, and that's just gonna continue. So I'm gonna add a bunch more of these in here real quick and then we'll come back to this. Okay, so now we've got this big list in here, right? And it's basically got 17 different options. So we're gonna click on apply right here. Well, now you're gonna have this big drop down list like this, but notice how we're getting some errors in here. So we're getting errors in here because a lot of these are out of range. And so what that means is that means that since we have more options in here than the choose function has. Everything after the second option, it's not going to know what to do with because those are out of range. So we need to add the rest of those to our choose function. And so one of the things that I find um, helpful is I might take this and I'm going to copy this formula and I'm gonna paste it in my notepad. That way I have something to look at right? Then I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to look at all of my different options. And so what you need to do for that first one is for the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those are all going to have a dimension of 0.75, right? Because they're one bys. So we need seven of these. So we've got two, I'm just going to copy this three, four, five, six, seven. So for the first seven options, this is going to have a 0.75 dimension. But then once you jump up to a two by, what that means is that means that this is now going to have a dimension of one and a half, right? because that's what a two by dimension has. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're just gonna copy this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well then you get into the four by, and the four by is going to have a dimension of 3.5, right? So you've got two 3.5s in here, and then one that's going to have a dimension of five by five, or 5.5. Right? So now we've got this bigger, longer function. Well, now we can go back into our length and we can just paste that in, right? I copied it from my notepad and I'm gonna paste it right here. Well, now this should have a value for every one of these. And so what's gonna happen is the X dimension is going to adjust based on whatever we have in this list. So this choose function is allowing us to do that. Now we need to go and do that for the length Z as well. So we're just gonna go through and do the same thing. And I'm going to just pick this, copy it. And again, I'm gonna go over here into my notepad so that I can view this. And in this case, right, it's gonna be a little bit different because you've got a one by two and then a one by three, which is gonna be 2.5. You've got a one by four, which is gonna be 3.5. You've got a one by six, which is gonna be five by five, or 5.5. And then the one by eight, you start getting into the 7.25. So again, I'm just setting the thickness of our board based on what we're picking right here, like this. And in this case, you can actually copy these 
because they're just repeating, right? One by two, three, four, that's gonna happen again over here. So you can just copy them again, right here. And then you've got a 3.5 and two 5.5s. And so again, all we're doing is we're just adding the dimensions of dimensional lumber in here. So now, we'll paste this, we'll notice how now the dimensions on both the X and the Y axis are going to adjust in here. So two by 10, two by 12. And so those lengths are adjusting, right? So if I check this, a two by 12 should have a width of one and a half and it should have a length of 11 and a quarter, which is exactly what we have. Now, this is basically setting the profile of our board, but we also want to enter something where we can set the length of our board. So the length is just gonna be the Y direction right here. So we can just click on the little arrow and we can select the option for users can edit this one as a text box. And we're going to set this as decimal feet and we're gonna call this board length decimal feet. And we're gonna click on apply. So now what I can do is I can tell this, okay, make me a 12 foot long two by 12 right here. And if I decide that I want the two by 12 to be a four by four instead, you can just adjust that from the drop down and notice how this is now a four by four right here or a six by six or whatever dimension you want this to be. So you can use this in order to create a board that dynamically resizes based on a dropdown. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any other dynamic component things you want to learn. For example, I'm thinking about a video where you create different copies using dynamic components and other things like that. It's love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.